You're listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Bringing you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Margaret Wyatt, Terry Brooks, Sheena Kamal, Matthew Quick, JT Ellison, Walt D. Williams, Brad Ford, Corey, Dr. O, Brandon Sanders, Robin Mom, Ernest Klein, Jim Butcher, Sherwin Harris. Visit HankGarner.com for archives of all the shows. Today's guest is... World Anvil is a browser-based world-building platform designed for all world builders, writers and novelists, dungeon masters, game developers, and everyone else. World Anvil keeps your world settings safe and organized, helps you find your characters, locations, plots, timelines, and maps quickly and easily as you write. Then, if you choose, you can showcase your amazing world building to the world, beautifully and interactively, to keep your readers engaged. You can even use our professional tier to build your career selling access to behind-the-scenes content your readers will love and growing your community. Build your world setting in any genre with over 25 custom-built world-building templates, complete with prompts to inspire your creativity. Allow your readers to explore the public parts of your world in an innovative new way with interactive maps, timelines, and wiki-style articles. Give special access to co-authors, beta readers, customers, or patrons to see exclusive behind-the-scenes content. There's a free version to get started with, with all of the major features. Guild membership offers you a host of extra options, including comprehensive privacy settings, co-authors, presentation options, and so much more. Join our community of over 800,000 world builders, including professional authors, Take part in competitions and learn more about world building at this fantastic online community. Use the coupon code HANK to get 20% off all 6 and 12 month subscriptions. WorldAnvil.com. I'm a recent convert and I know you will be too. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I'm really excited to have Louise Fine on the show with me today. She has an amazing new book. It's called Daughter of the Reich, and this is an absolute must-have for your summer reading bookshelf and your to-be-read pile, Uh, an excellent work of historical fiction that will leave you thinking long after you finish the book. Uh, Welcome to the show, Louise. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me on. I'm excited to have you. Um, Louise, we begin each show with the same question, and that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer or storyteller? Well, my first memory is actually a really, really early one. I think I can't have been at school for very long, Um, and one of the things we had to do was uh, on a Monday we had to sit and write about what we'd done at the weekend and my weekends were always pretty dull so I used to make up these exciting adventures that I'd had over the weekend Um, and I suppose really that was the first time that I that I enjoyed that whole exploring of the imagination and, and writing it down. As far as I know, my teachers never said anything, so um, obviously <laughs> I did a fairly good job. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what uh, were you a bookish kid? Did you read a lot? Yes, I read. I read. I always had my nose in a book, um, and uh, my my I suppose sort of books were to do with usually to do with ponies, um, and then I I went into Enid Blyton all the usual sort of kids stories um, and then moved into the more into the classics. Um, I loved 19th century fiction as a teenager Um, and yeah, just read anything I could get my hands on really. Do you remember the, um, uh, the first book or or writer or series that just really um, like let you know that, that stories could take you to another place? I think it had to be Enid Blyton. um, And I really remember my teachers being quite sniffy about Enid Blyton books, like the famous (laughs) five. I don't know if I don't know if you had them in in the States, but the famous five and the secret seven uh, just took me away to to, you know, much more exciting places than 
than real life. And I remember, yeah, my teachers saying, you know, they weren't proper literature. Um, <laughs> but uh, but my mother said, you know what, just if you enjoy reading it, just read it, read whatever you like. Um, and that was that, you know, I really, really um, think my mother had a big influence on on my love of reading because she really did just let me read whatever I like. And I think um, for kids, that's so important. Um, you know, you come to better literature when you're ready for it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the important thing for a kid is to to read and understand the power of yeah. story. And then, you know, we can debate all day long what is proper literature and what is not. And you know, the merits yeah. of, or, or, you know, or whatever, but, you know, we really, especially in this day and age where we're not just competing, um, you know, for other types of literature, we're, we're competing with Netflix and YouTube and, oh, and all yeah. of those things for kids attention and, or, you know, 15 second TikTok videos for crying out loud. I know, I know. It's it's very difficult with kids these days. Um, I mean, I have three uh, and my eldest two did have a gap actually of of not really wanting to read and I think because it becomes a bit unfashionable they read a lot as smaller kids and then you know they hit the teenage years and all the the social media comes into its own but they've come back to it so I think I think the important thing is to be you know not force kids but make sure it's always accessible right exactly um, Louise, your, um, your new book, uh, here in the States, Daughter of the Reich is, uh, is obviously a, um, a, a work of historical fiction, uh, which takes place during and, and, uh, just after World War II, um, which we, we love these stories. Um, but your, your, uh, previous book, um, before this one that came out in the States, People Like Us, uh, was also, um, was just before yeah. World War II, right? Yeah, well, uh, um, this is this is going to confuse you slightly, but I just need to put you straight. This is yep. this is the, they're both the same book. Um, so ah. people like us is the UK uh, title. Um, so it's exactly the same book. Gotcha. Um, it's just got a different title in the states, um, which does confuse people. Sure, sure. Um, but uh, two different publishers, so they have their own opinions about what the book should be of course, called. Of course, um, and. Um, yeah, the book is actually set in the 1930s, so it is um, it's it's the lead up to World War II. It finishes just before the war starts, so I really wanted to focus on the whole: how did we get there? Right. How did it happen? Well, what was it that kindled your interest in uh, in this time period and the the people that were involved uh, in you know, what would become World War II? Yeah, so um, my father um, was a German Jew, um, and he left uh, Leipzig, which is where the book is set, um, in in 1933. Um, he had just qualified as a lawyer, uh, and um, he was on Hitler's sort of first list of people that were banned from practicing law, um, and he came to England as a refugee. Um I was actually the product of a second marriage of his. So my mother is English and um, I, he was 61 when I was born. So he actually died when I was 17. Uh, I never got a chance to speak to him about his life in Germany before he came to the UK and he never spoke about it. So it was always in my head that it was something I wanted to explore, something I wanted to write about, but I had no idea what form that would take. Um and so when I started researching, um, I was going to tell a story from the perspective of a of a Jew. Um, but the more I researched, the more I really wanted to understand how the German people, you know, a civilized nation could possibly have, you know, turned into this monster. Um, and so I decided to tell the story from the perspective of a young girl who grew up brainwashed into Nazism uh, to really get inside the head of a Nazi and try to understand. Uh, and then really what could possibly change her? What could possibly, um, you know, turn her from what was 
you know, accepted as a as what we see now as a twisted ideology, but was um, something that she had, you know, totally grown into and been brainwashed into. How could she possibly come out of that? Um, and the answer really had to be love. So essentially, it's a love story, um, but that's the the inspiration behind it. Right. Um, the last two. Um, possibly three years, there have been so many great, <clears throat> excuse me, so many great um, historical fiction books based around World War II, just leading up to it, during the war, just after the war. And mm -hmm. some of the best books that have come out have been based around that time. Um, and there just seems to be a resurgence of interest in this time period and the people that made up this generation um, obviously, this this story has a very personal connection for you um, yeah. with your with your father, um, and that really shows through. Um, but a, as a a reading population, um, why do you think that we are just so hungry for stories from this time period right now? Well, I mean, there's there's parallels that you can draw between um, between that time period and now, and I think. Um, you know, we, we need to remember history if we want to avoid similar mistakes for the future. Um, and I think it's all still very relevant. Um, you know, the 30s was a time when we'd come out of the Great Recession and um, there were new forms of media, new, you know, new forms of um, control over the media. Um, and yeah, I think minds are very easy to influence. And, you know, we, we the crash of 2008 and the sort of mu move towards um, much more nationalism, much more nationalistic feeling um, is quite apparent. Uh, so, yeah, there are definitely parallels to be drawn and lessons, hopefully, to be learned. <laughs> sure, sure. Um how, how did you research this book? Um, where do you begin and, um, you know, how much could you get from family sources or, uh, you know, did, was it, uh, like, how, how did you get so informed about the time period so that, I mean, because this book is so immersive, it just pulls you right in like you're there. Um, what sort of research went into it? So I um, I started with general reading. I read a lot around the subject and um, I also tried to find anything I could get my hands on about Leipzig in particular, because that's where the whole um, story is set. Um, then I travelled there. I went there um, a few times and I was uh, accompanied by my half-sister who speaks German, I don't. Um, and she helped me a lot, um, you know, with translations because quite a few of people there still don't speak English. Um, I met lots of experts over there. Um, walked around the city, saw where, you know, the street where my father lived and the whole area, um, which is actually largely undamaged. Um, and just got a real feeling for the place at all different times of the year. Um, and then I, luckily enough, had access to a huge amount of um, family papers, uh, which came to light sort of partway through my research period um, and they actually have now been lodged at the University of Sussex in their um, history of uh, Jewish history department because they are so um, there's so much of them um, and they they ran from the period in the sort of early um, 1900s all the way up through to about 1960s um, and you know diaries letters um journals you know con a, a huge contemporaneous source which was so useful because um you know having the a lot of books are written with the benefit of hindsight and so having that um immersive sort of feeling of not knowing what's going to happen was so useful for writing the book when um <clears throat> because you have been um, you've worked as an attorney, uh, I believe, and you mentioned your, your three children, uh, with family life and career, 
Um, when did you find time to work on the book? Yeah, well, that, that that was quite difficult. So the book sort of sat in my head for quite a few years. Um, and then um, I, so I was a lawyer, I went into banking, and then I actually was running my own um, company. And one day I saw the uh, advertisement for a master's degree in creative writing. And I just thought, I really want to do this. And I sort of went home and said to my husband and he was like, just do it. And I was like, yes, but the time isn't right, you know. And he said, the time's never going to be right. Just do it. So I put my business on hold for a year and I thought, OK, I'll do the masters. I'll get the book written and then I'll go back to work. Well, of course, that didn't quite work out like that. And the book took a, a few years rather than the one to write. Um but the whole process of the masters was was quite helpful and i didn't go back to my job um fortunately i got a, an amazing book deal and now i write full time in and around family life um but yeah it's it's really hard to to juggle work and writing and a family so um it did have to go on the back burner for a while but we got there in the end when uh, when you started uh, after you'd finished the novel and you started shopping it around, um, what were what were some of the reactions that you got from from agents or publishers? Um, was there a warm reception for this type of book? Did, did the subject matter um, scare anyone away? Yeah, I think it did um, because you know the the sort of World War Two. Um, market is quite crowded. There's a lot of books, as you mentioned, out there. Um, and I think it took me a while to get an agent, I think, because they saw, you know, as soon as they saw the subject matter, they didn't even bother to read it, really. But um, fortunately, the agent that I have, um, I actually sent it to her on a Friday. And on the Saturday, she came straight back to me and said she was loving it. Uh, oh, and amazing. I think one when people actually read it um they realized it was kind of a different take on the subject so if you're going to write about something which has been really well covered it needs to have a a different perspective or it has to bring something new to it um and i think because this is told um from the perspective of a nazi rather than a victim um it gave a, a new twist to the story um yeah well, and, and new twist, it, it definitely is. Um, and, you know, I've been looking for a book like this for so long, um, something that would give us the perspective of someone who was duped into going along with um, with the, the tragedies that were going on. Like, uh, and Hetty is a perfect character. Um, she's, um, you know, she's she's just in part of the machine without even uh, really having an opinion about it. She's just going yeah. along. And uh, what was it like writing from her perspective and what sort of things did you do to prepare to write a, a character like her? Yeah, well, I first of all, I read Mein Kampf, which I had put off and dreaded for a long time, but I felt I really had to read it. Um, and the more I read it, actually, the, thought, the more I thought, how did people get duped by this? Because it was so outrageous and so yeah just like the rantings of a madman that it's it, it's still very difficult to believe but then that happens today I mean you know we have all the extremism and people being brainwashed all the time so I suppose being a young person made it easier because um you know they're innocent and they're you know we 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 kind of brainwash our children all the time, don't we? We we tell them stuff and they believe us and they're almost programmed to to believe in, in the stories that are around them. And I suppose I just put myself into the shoes of somebody young and innocent and surrounded by people telling her over and over the same story. And yeah, it, it, it was quite easy to believe that. Um, sh she came as a really fully formed person in my head. Um so yeah. Did um a, as you're writing the book, um did you have any beta readers or family or friends who you uh bounced some of the ideas off of or you know got um uh, got input um as you were writing the book? 
I did. I did. I had um, I had a lot of beta readers for me. Um, so I, I used my family uh, and then some friends, big readers. Um, and also uh, my tutors on my course, no, they didn't read all of it. That It was, you know, the, uh, an, uh, very early version. And in fact, I I re I halfway through the master's program I stopped the draft I was writing restarted telling it in a really different way um, from their feedback so I think that that feedback that um, perspective of being away from the book is so important when you're you know a beginner writer um, trying to find your way um, because you get so involved in the story and the day-to-day writing that it's hard to get a perspective on it. When, um, at, as you were um, writing the book, did, did you use uh, an outline or did you know where the story was going to go in the end? Um, I, I knew that, that you started with kind of the, the kind of the big concepts of it. Uh, but was there anything along the way that surprised you in, in twists and turns that the book took? To- oh, yeah, definitely. I am <laughs> not a planner. <laughs> this is the are you a plotter or a pantser? Uh, I'm definitely not so much a plotter. I mean, I had the story actually never changed, but a lot of the the detail did. So um, some of the characters really surprised me in the way they turned out. Um and storylines just kind of popped up that I I didn't know were going to be in there. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm writing my second novel now. And um, I actually love that freedom of writing the first draft, having a vague idea. So I kind of know the beginning and the end of the book and the a vague idea of the middle. But I like that freedom of sitting down and just seeing where it goes. It may not be the most efficient way to write, but for me, it works <laughs> um, because you have that freedom to to find new voices or for characters to just do their thing. Um, and then once you have that maybe not very good first draft, you can then shape it and, and make it better. Um, but for me, that's 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 the way it just has to be. <laughs> Um, Louise, you have a fantastic blog um, at your your website um, where Thank you. you have a, <laughs> a a collection of uh, blog post essays um, that that are fantastic. But you wrote one um, a while back called "A Writer's Life Is a Lonely Life," or <laughs> yeah. or is it? Um, and you you talk about you know the transition from uh, from you know a, a going to work. Uh, person to uh, you know a yeah. writer who's completely independent and um, what were some of the the biggest challenges uh, that you uh, you know saw when when you started writing this book and and really pursuing it full time and uh, what are some things that you learned that help you over those hurdles? Yeah, I mean it's it's a really strange thing uh writing a book um compared to having a a, a normal job um I think because you you never really I mean I did show my work to other people but only you know a long time after I'd sort of started working on it and I think the one of the challenges is is not really knowing if what you're writing is any good or not I mean one day I'd read what I'd written and I think you know, this is amazing. And then the next day I'd read the same thing and think, this is absolutely terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And, um, and so I think that is one of the hard things is to keep going, even when you think what you're doing is not that good. Um, And, uh, but, you know, no writer can write a brilliant first draft. um, And no writer can, can sort of, I, I think when you read other people's books, you you are seeing a finished product um, and it's hard to, to compare your sort of first attempt against other people's finished products that's been through lots of editing and lots of, um, you know, other people. Uh, so I think I think that's what you have to bear in mind all the time when you're when you're starting out and. And uh, it doesn't seem to be going that well. 
Daughter of the Reich, uh, or people like us, if you're outside the U.S., are available everywhere now. Um, they launched just a couple of days ago. Uh, we're excited uh, for that. Louise, with their links to uh, the books in the show notes where people can find it. Um, if people want to dig into all the great stuff that you do, where can they find you online? Yeah, so I have a website, which is www.louisefine.com. Um, I'm on Twitter under uh, Louis, uh, Fine Louise. Uh, and I'm on Instagram, Facebook. I've got a Facebook author page as well. So I'm kind of easily accessible online. So, um, and yeah, do get in touch. I'm happy to answer any questions. Happy to try and support other authors um so yeah lovely to hear from readers as well excellent we'll put links to all of that great stuff in the show notes of this episode louise thank you so much for taking time out of your busy launch schedule to uh share some time with us on the show oh thank you so much for having me it's been a real pleasure authors i have a fantastic new service to tell you about it's called pub site PubSite is a service to help you build your very own website, your home on the web, where you can promote your work and give your fans a place to connect with you. PubSite is a website platform that allows every author, regardless of budget, to have a great looking professional website developed by the book marketing professionals at FSB Associates. PubSite is the new easy to use DIY website builder developed specifically for books and authors. Whether you're an author of one book or 20, or a small publisher, PubSite allows you to build, design, and most importantly, update your website pain-free. No need to be dependent on a designer or webmaster to make a small but costly change to your website. Save the money and do it yourself. PubSite is the best platform for authors because it's a book-centric platform. PubSite was built just for authors and small publishers. Every design, feature, and layout is book-centric. They have customized designs for you to use. It's easy to build. No coding or HTML is necessary to create a stunning, professional-looking website with all the features you want. Get a custom domain name, yourname.com. It's simple to update. You can add all of your books, add a blog and a book tour, sell from any retailer, manage your email list and social media, and even do e-commerce. Build your website with a 14-day free trial, then pay just $19.99 per month, which includes hosting, and we offer packages starting at $499 to set up the website for you. Pub-Site.com, the place to help authors find their home on the web. <laughs>